Unfortunately, deep concerns still exist today about health inequalities and the disproportionate numbers of potentially avoidable deaths of people with a learning disability. I am sure many of us can reflect upon a constituent's case which highlights these concerns, something which worries me deeply in that here we are in 2019 and still having to address such an inequality being experienced by people with learning disabilities. Our health and care system needs to do much more to give people with learning disabilities the good quality health and social care that they ought to expect as a right. People with a learning disability can experience hospitalisation, life-threatening illnesses and even premature death when unable to access health services for even the most routine conditions of eight months. It remains a stark fact that people with learning disabilities die on average 20 years earlier than the general population and that they continue to experience significant disparities in the quality of care and support they receive, as well as the outcomes they can expect. This is unacceptable in the 21st century Wales. Clever Drostro, uh, as we have already heard, one particular case we should be aware of is that of Paul Ridd, who lived in Baglin in my constituency, whose life may have ended in 2019, but whose story lives on and is key to this call for mandatory training for all health and care workers in every health and care setting. Paul's sister is in the gallery today, and she, along with her brother, decided to take action following the loss of Paul to address the fact that the lack of training and ignorance of his needs were considered as contributing factors in his death. And they, as I've already pointed out by the chair of the committee, they established the Paul Red Foundation and have campaigned tirelessly for improvement in awareness and understanding by hospital staff of the needs of individuals with learning disabilities, so as they can provide a level of care no different from that of other patients. They have produced training material, created a traffic light system, uh, logos which will be used on patients' records, hospital passports, and a pathway care bundle working with professionals. Those logos are not new. We've seen them on dementia patients, the butterfly logo. They have already in existence for other conditions. This is nothing new in reality, but it's ensuring that it addresses the needs of people with learning disabilities. Now, the Pathway Care Bundle was launched in 2016 in Morrison Hospital, and I was privileged to attend that launch. It sets out key, seven key steps, key steps which, if followed, will ensure that all patients with learning disabilities will experience the level of care that we expect of all patients and of our loved ones if they attend hospital. And I was pleased that ABMU, as it was then, Swansea Bay as it is now, drew up a comprehensive programme of learning disability awareness training for key nursing and clinical staff which included appropriate recognition of the role of family, and that's crucial in here, uh, carers and advocates in providing vital information to staff, helping make prudent decisions about care. And Paul's family have been pivotal in ensuring this has been rolled out, and I congratulate them on their part in this. However, as has been pointed out, learning disability training is not mandatory. And if it does take place, I've been made aware that it generally forms part of an induction session. What I don't know is, was that half an hour, 10 minutes, who knows? Uh, it, it's very simple to say it's in induction, but it's actually what does the training entail is crucial. Now, is this acceptable? No. Let's all admit, it's not acceptable. Learning disability training should be mandatory and more. It should be refreshed, not on a one-off, but on a regular basis. So all staff, and I use the word all staff, working in the hospitals have the correct training to ensure a smooth experience for patients with learning disabilities and their families. It must not be, as my colleague pointed out, an e-learning-based e e uh, or, or to get to a classroom-based. It must be interactive with individuals it must, and use the collaboration of organisations which work with people with learning disabilities in that process. And, as I said, all staff, from the point in which they enter the healthcare system, whether it's a receptionist in uh, doctor's surgery, a receptionist in the hospital, or the nurse as in an A&E unit, from that point they enter, to wherever they meet in that journey through that system, they need that training. Different levels of training they understand, but everyone needs to understand that training. So that patients entering the hospitals are treated with the dignity and respect we would expect for everybody. And it is a challenge, but it's a challenge we must meet. Now in this chamber, we should be determined that everybody who has a learning disability receives the high quality care that they meet their needs and their expectations, and which results in positive outcomes for that individual. If in life, and many others, Paula had a right to be listened to, and their needs understood, but tragically, this was not always the case. 
We owe it to their memory that people with learning disabilities are supported to live healthy and happy lives. They deserve nothing less. We must deliver a system which ensures that patients and service users receive safe, effective and dignified care, and that those who provide care have the knowledge, skills and behaviours to support people with learning disabilities. I am aware that England yesterday announced they will actually be doing the mandatory training. I hope, therefore, that Wales will follow suit and ensure that training is training and not simply a half-hour exercise so it can be a tick box.